All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to install some kitchen cabinets. This particular brand and style is gonna save you a ton of time and a ton of money. So stay tuned for all the tips and tricks. So we're here today, we're gonna to install a galley style kitchen. On one side, we're gonna use the Nimble Kitchen product. This is kind of cool, these uh, local building store that carries this product. Uh, it's hard to find sometimes a good quality cabinet that's in stock and that's priced right, but this fits the bill. It also comes with self-leveling feet. It has a upper rail system very similar to the IKEA cabinets for hanging on a wall for all the upper cabinets. So we're not gonna handle that today because in here we're going minimalist. We're gonna go with floating shelves. But if you know how to install a base cabinet, and I'll tell you the information, you can install any cabinet in the house. So to get started, we gotta unpack these things. So generally speaking, we need to cut your straps. If you don't have a knife, here's a tip for you. Take your band where the joint is, turn it upside down, grab the loose part, peel it off. Yeah, I know. <laughs> for all those times you had to waste time hunting down a knife, you could have just done that. All right, here we go. These particular cabinets, they have some limitations as far as the design features. So you don't always get exactly what you want, but if you're doing rental property or if you're doing a quick flip, or you just will have a simple galley kitchen, you know, sometimes you can sacrifice a little bit in design features and get you save yourself a lot of money. So here's the feet. That's good, blah, 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 nice. Don't lose all the hardware. And well, we're gonna have a ton of packaging again in this particular cabinet. Check it out. The drawers come pre-assembled. You'll notice some similarity here with the IKEA design. It looks like somebody basically did a knockoff all the power to them because these are actually cheaper than the IKEA cabinets and install in less than half the time because you don't have to build all your drawers. It's already got the shelf in there. The only thing that doesn't come with the box is the door face and that's because they have options. You can buy different door faces. My building store carries this nimble cabinet in the white or and it comes in a natural birch look. So then from there you could have, I think three or four different cabinet door designs and colors to choose from. So very cool. In the box they come with the shelving for the back of the cabinet. It's attached to the two-sided tape. So when you go to rip it out, it gives you a little resistance. Um, that's what's going on. So feel free to pull. Now two-sided tape is generally a real pain in the butt to remove. I understand why they do it because you know people don't respect the rules on the box when it has the arrow that says don't you know, ship it this way. So this keeps it from getting damaged, but the only way to remove this usually is just peel it off the best you can and get a little WD-40 with a rag and you can clean that adhesive off. All right, so our cabinet here, it's a 30 inch cabinet. It's exactly 30. Plus we have the feet and generally speaking, the standard cabinet is a 36 inch. So that gives you a six inch rise here. So a lot of this clip system again is very reminiscent of our early days Ikea. So I know we're gonna put all this aside because most likely the toe kick is gonna clip on and then that'll snap into place when we're done. Now, these feet of course are adjustable and they come at their lowest point at just under four inches plus an inch and a half countertop that gives you just a bit shorter than your 36 inch counter. We're gonna actually keep it as short as we can. Now we've got some slope to deal with, but we're gonna keep it as short as we can because our client is also vertically challenged. So <laughs> it'll be good for them to have it finish off at about 34 and a half. All right, so we'll start in this end with as short a cabinet as we can, just because this is the high corner and we want to make it real easy to adjust the, all the cabinets height as we go along. Like any product, before you use it for the first time, I mean, like for me, this is the first time using Nimble, uh, read the instructions first. You'd be surprised what you can learn. Like for instance, these feet, again, they have that little hole there. This package comes with screws. You can actually screw the foot to the cabinet. This is a benefit that the IKEA feet don't have. So for the purpose of this video, we're gonna give you a couple of hints and tips and just techniques so that you can install your own kitchens. 
Remember, in this situation, it's a galley, so this is just one single line. If you have an inside corner, everything you do has to start from the corner working out. And I would usually suggest checking your level. Um, if your upper cabinets are designed that they need to be in line with your base cabinet doors, then you really want to make sure that that line is perfect before you move forward. So check to start with the corner if you have a corner. If you don't, what you want to do is start from the center and think left and right. So what we have here is a 125 inch wall. So we're going to just mark off 62 and a half. There's my center line. And I'll confirm that I did my math right. All right. So if this is my half, and I've already designed this kitchen, so it's a little easier at this point. I've got 30 and I've got a 15, right? Yep. And their actual dimension, that gives me 45. And that would take me to here without any fillers, okay? And then 45 from the other side, just to help visualize the space. All right, now I have a stove going in the middle. So the space that I have left right now is 35 and a quarter, okay? Now, I'm gonna add a 5 eighths on each side because I get an end gable. And that panel is the full depth. It goes right to the floor after the flooring goes in. So that's awesome because then I have a nice stop here where my, my toe kit comes into. So that'll look really amazing. And I got a foot another five eighths over here. The same thing on the other side. Now uh, that is still way too much room because five eighths and five eighths is inch and a quarter. I'm still at 34 inches. My stove is 30 inch. So if I have an end plate and then I have just a little bit of space. Let's maybe, maybe a half an inch, okay, of extra space that my countertop can extend over. That's plenty. So we're gonna add an extra half an inch on each, just so it's easy to navigate the stove. Let's go down to 33 inches. Now I got a three inch that I need to fill. When I have a three inch that I need to fill, I have two options. I can extend the gap beside the cabinet, but you really don't want to have too much gap between your stove and your cabinet because that's just where junk is going to fall down and it's going to look really odd. So what you want to do is fill the gap on the outside of the wall. And the reason you want this intentionally when you're designing is if you have doors and drawers, you want to make sure that there's room in case things aren't square. So fillers are pretty standard and they come at three quarter of an inch. Yes, they do. Bye. 3 inch. Now, I need to add 3 inches to the space. So, instead of adding a 3 inch on one side and use nothing on the other, we're going to actually run these through the table saw after the fact. So we can scribe it exactly to the angle of the wall if there is one, so that it'll all finish perfectly. So what we're going to do is we're going to intentionally measure off the center line over to where we want our first cabinet to start, and we'll leave the space until later so I can pull out the table saw, install my filler, throw in a couple screws, going to get a perfect look. So let's go through this again. So my stove is 30. So for my center line, I want to measure over 15. I want to add the 5 8 for my filler. And I want to add another half an inch, which takes me to 16 and an eighth for my end panel. So that means my cabinet will come to this point right here. Okay? So we're going to mark that as our start. Now, we're going to just slide these over. And the way you want to do this is actually we want to set our laser line on this wall in two different directions. On the start line, so that we can install our cabinet not just in the right spot, but also level, and then at the same height. So when we slide our cabinets up to the wall, we just reach underneath, adjust those back leveling feet to hit that line, and it goes so smooth. So here's my laser level, it's from DeWalt. I love this, it's about 130 bucks. It has the back, it swivels, it's also magnetic, okay? So it'll stick on any metal corner bead in the house great because you can adjust your height really simply. On the side we want to put a horizontal line and we also want to put the vertical line. So what I want to do is I want to move this over till my vertical line hits my spot on my wall and then I want to bring it down until I hit the top of the cabinet on the far left side. Remember that's the one that's at the highest point. So what we're going to do is we're going to roughly put that in position. We're estimating about an inch and a half off the wall. And you'll notice that it's not touching the wall, but we're not sure what's level and what isn't right yet. So we'll double check. I can slide this down until it hits the back of the cabinet right there. And you'll notice that the front of the cabinet 
is at that height. So I know the front of the cabinet has to be raised up. We'll adjust this line again for the back of the cabinet. Right there, perfect. Now all I do is slide my, slide my cabinet to my starting line, which is here. So now that we want to find out level, you'll see, here we are. We are approximately from one end of the cabinet to the other, about a quarter inch out of level. And you'll see on the back wall, the outside of this building is actually on quite a bad slope. And we don't really concern ourselves too much with that gap because we're gonna put our full panel on. It will become invisible. Uh, we're more concerned with making sure that the counters are level and everything is square and flush from there. Traditionally in a house, the outside walls of the house are the high side. And as you go into the middle of the house, it does sink down a little bit. Most structures are made of wood and under the weight of that time, you get a bit of a sag as is the case here. And it's not much, it's only one eighth of an inch over 10 feet. But what we did is we raised our laser level line to compensate for that. So we need to raise these cabinets now up to hit the laser line. You can see I'm about a quarter inch, maybe three eighths of an inch off on the front. And I'm only, you know, three sixteenths on the back. So what I gotta do is I gotta crawl underneath now, adjust all of those feet until they're perfect. This is easier done if you have somebody to help you who can sit there and say, that looks good there. Okay, so now that we've raised up the front so that it's touching the line, I noticed the back corner is dropped down a little bit. Don't forget, as the cabinet shifts and the front comes up, the back will roll down because the feet aren't at the back corner. They're a little bit closer to the front. So a little bit of a lever action going on here. So real quick, because of the, we're using a laser level, we can actually locate our line right at the top of the cabinet on all four corners. And the benefit of this is before I screw this together, I've actually got it completely level in every direction. So I just toss my le level down anywhere and you can see right inside that bubble. So front to back, across the back, it's all the same thing. It doesn't matter where I go. This cabinet is good to go. The benefit is you can finish this with a quartz or granite countertop, and when they come to do the install, they aren't gonna have to spend a lot of time doing the shimming, because you can make this exactly perfect for them. So really, all we need to do now to finish the installation of the box is to attach them together and attach them to the wall. So, here's a mistake that a lot of people use. They'll renovate a house, they're gonna get to this part of the kitchen, and they're going to use the three inch construction screw they use because they have it in a huge box. They've got a couple thousand of them laying around. And what could possibly go wrong using a three inch construction screw? What happens is, is they drill through into a stud and the screw goes so deep, it pierces a wire or a water line. Remember in the building code, there is a depth that the electricians and the plumbers have to use when they're putting things through the wall or they have to use a mending plate. If your screw is too long and you penetrate a wire or a plumbing line, you get to be the one to pay that bill, not them. Nobody's fault but your own if your screws are too long. So, our material back here, you can see we have a 5 8 panel and then a quarter inch. That's three quarter. I also have a space. I have half inch drywall. I'm about an inch, inch and a quarter, okay, before I get to my wood. After that, I can only go in about three quarters of an inch before I ever start running the risk of hitting something. So I use a two inch screw, not a three inch screw. And the way you want to do this so you don't disrupt your level, is take a couple of shims, drop them down nice and gently right here. Just a little tap, okay? Because everything compresses when you drill. Mark your spot. And that's it. So the other type of hardware you're gonna need is a screw that you can attach your cabinet to the other cabinets with. Now, in most cases, your kitchen's gonna be made of particle board, so you need a particle board screw. I prefer the ones that have these beautiful flat washers built in. Right there. This is like a stopgap measure. You can also buy a cabinet washer, and it's like a big fat washer that you can put a regular screw in, but might as well kill two birds with one stone. Now, the way you want to do this is you don't want to find any existing holes and put a screw in there because it'll be in the same in the other cabinet. 
Just get a couple inches back, make sure you're not gonna be anywhere near hardware. Start off your screw. Now you can use a clamp, or you can just line it up and screw straight. If you screw on an angle, you've got to use clamps, so I like to use screw it straight, and I never need them. Because everything is already leveled, I'm not forcing anything into position. Done and done. Now you want to hit the front and the back when you're doing cabinets like this. And the reason for that is you don't want to start a situation where if you don't screw anything in the back, they can start curving around a room on you. Then your drawers aren't going to work properly. Okay, this screw is inch and a quarter and you'll see the tip doesn't come out to the depth of the other cabinet. Okay, so it is safe to have your hand on the other side. If you're attaching the end panels, you can buy the same screw in an inch and an eighth. That would be recommended because you, if, like for instance, you're finishing the big panel and it's exposed to the room, you don't want the tip of the screw to start putting pressure on the outside of that melamine and having it pop out because those bumps are obvious from a mile away. Okay, so now what you want to do is you could, if you're using the upper cabinets, you really want to make sure that you maintain an 18 inch space. So there's your 18, but we haven't installed our countertops yet. So depending on the countertop you're using, and it's very important to know that in advance, you want to maintain that 18 inch gap. It's standard. Most backsplash tile are designed so that there's an 18 inch space. It'll fill that space without cutting across the top. So very important here. If you cheat and drop it or you go a little too tall, you're going to be either leaving huge gaps or making lots of nasty cuts. And right now on the marketplace, there's a lot of really nice high gloss or glass tile on the market. And that is going to cause you a lot of grief trying to make that look pretty if you don't have it measured off right. So we're going to be going with an inch and a half solid concrete. So for me, I need to mark off at 19 and a half if I was adding cabinets. And then all I have to do, just go back to your laser level, slide it up the wall and line up your spot again on that mark on the wall and on your center line and there you have it. That's the bottom of the cabinet and that would be the side of the cabinet. And it is that simple with the laser. Definitely go get yourself one. Now here's another couple of issues here. A uh, little bit of advice, okay? So you're renovating your kitchen. Just keep in mind your distances, okay? So we are gonna use this as a template. Let's assume that there's a cabinet here, all right? And um, let's say you're gonna put a valence on, okay? Now here's your stove and you got your elements and your heat, your boiling water, the steam is coming up. If you're not using solid wood valances and you're using thermofoil, which is really popular nowadays, it will end up peeling and your kitchen is gonna look like it needs to be renovated again within six months. So keep that in mind. If you're having a stove and you're using thermofoil cabinets, design some extra distance here. Don't be so concerned with having a cabinet above it as you are with protecting what you're installing. I would go back four to six inches before I'd have a cabinet and make sure you put in a fan that has a six inch exhaust duct on it. Don't cut corners and reduce the fan size or the duct size because you really gotta make sure you're pulling all that hot moisture away from your new cabinets. Almost every product that's made on the market today is a thermofoil if it's not solid wood. All right, so keep that in mind. Uh, moisture is your enemy when you're doing something new with upper cabinets. And the other thing I would suggest when you're doing your cabinetry, keep in mind about your backsplash. This is a great time to grab a really long six foot level. Make sure your wall is straight. If it's not, you know, open it up and repair it or use drywall compound and fill it all in. Nothing worse than trying to tile those little tiny glass tiles on an uneven surface because you'll end up getting all the glue and adhesives pulling through the grout lines as you're trying to press it on. And that makes a hell of a mess. So try to make your backsplash area as smooth and flat as possible. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you're looking for great DIY tips and tricks, this is the place. Hit the button. And of course, if you are a subscriber and you like this kind of content, hit the like button. We love to know what to bring you for next time. We'll see you again.